Hello, um, I'm making this video to address some comments that I've had on my hobbyist page recently. Um, I'm a rabbit breeder. I have raised for quite a few years and I just want to clear the air a little bit concerning some of the comments that I've had on some of my videos. Um, I'm not a backyard breeder. As some people may like to think. Um, by definition, and I'm going to read this straight, a backyard breeder is an amateur animal breeder whose breeding is considered subpar and with little effort towards ethical guided breeding. Oftentimes these breeders are uneducated and they put very little effort towards actually bettering the animals or concerning the health of the animals. You see this a lot with mixes such as Yorkie Poos or just Honestly, mixes in general. You can get a mix, or you can even get purebreds that are bred without any thought into the genetic issues that these animals could be holding. Um, you see this a lot in the dog world, especially. Um, a lot of these breeders also are breeding for profit. They're breeding to have animals to sell and to have animals to use. And I'm not, I'm not in it for that. If I'm honest, if there's anything I have learned in the past five years that I've been breeding, it is now six, honestly, because it's 2021, um, you're not going to make money. At least not in the first 10 to 20 years. Between the animals, the cages to prop or enclosures to properly house those animals, the animals themselves, if you want to get some really good stock to start with, if you're special in the show world, you want to start out with a really strong base so you can continue bettering yourself, those are pretty pricey, as well as, you know, the unknown things you don't think about. Vet bills, health tests if required, um, just supplies, treats, toys, and all of that you don't really even think about. Um, as well as the time that you're going to spend with all of these animals that you you won't get back but if it's something that you love like I do it doesn't really matter because you're spending those time with those animals and you're caring for them and you're learning them and they're learning you um I raise nationally competitive animals for the American Rabbit Breeders Association and my respective clubs that I am in for the breed um I've been raising since 2015. I started in 4-H as a project for the fair, and I fell in love with it, and I've continued ever since. Now, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I have learned so much from so many people, especially other breeders in the community that are willing to help. Um, and I'm still learning. There's still so many things you can learn. I mean, my mentor that I have, he's in his 70s, and... This year, especially with rabbit hemorrhagic disease, which is a disease that's um, sweeping the nation, the U.S. that is, um, I've started to teach him a little bit more about that, how to research it, and how to properly sanitize. And you have to use chemicals you wouldn't normally use because this thing is, it's pretty bad. It's pretty hard to get rid of. And if you get it, you can wipe out an entire herd, an entire bloodline, years of work. Um... And going back into the husbandry, you want to make sure that the husbandry is good. Because if your enclosure and the situation for those animals is not the best, they're not going to be healthy. Um, dogs and rabbits and poultry, they're all judged in basically the same um, parameters. Are they healthy? Are they in good condition? Is their handler treating them well? And do they conform to the breed standard? Now... If they are unhealthy, that overrules any... They could be the most beautiful animal that you've ever seen. But if it is skin and bones or if it is sick, it's not going to get anywhere. Because you don't want to You don't want to have that sick animal out there. Nobody does. You don't want to be spreading any diseases. And you also want that animal to be at home, taken care of, and getting the help it needs. Um, so if you see an animal that's out, you know, like I've got some of my awards behind me. If you see animals that are sweeping the floor and getting awards at a show, if you happen to stop in, I highly recommend it. But if you see those animals sweeping the floor and getting a best in show or even just a best of breed, they are not unhealthy animals. 
and a judge especially is taught and knows the signs of unhealthy creatures, especially in rabbits, because they've got a lot of weird random things that they can get, and they can get sick from it. So it's something that, you know, they watch out for, and we really do take into account. You don't want to take an unhealthy animal anywhere, and you don't want your animals to be unhealthy. Um, so most of those animals that you see out on the showroom, they're not sick. You will see some that they may be out of condition and even sometimes they might be sick, but that's going to be addressed and oftentimes even the judges will provide help for ailments and try to educate the people that they're working with because that's what this is about. It's about educating and learning from each other as a whole in the community because you want to support each other. Um, the issue of breeding is the entire reason that I'm making this video addressing this. Um, some believe that it's unethical and you are entitled to your opinion. However, I'm going to share my perspective here. Um, I'm an ethical breeder prepares for any litter that they have, any disturbances or anything that may happen in that. You want to be ready. You want to make sure you can care for those animals and for their parents and everything that you would need. And oftentimes, especially in the show world, those litters are meticulously planned. They are put together, the, the parent pair are put together purposefully to try to better the bloodline. Um, and sometimes some animals don't make the cut and that's okay. That just, that, that happens. Personally, I try to place any of my mismarked or non-conformational animals in pet homes. It's something I really like to do. Um, I only breed my animals like per doe once or twice a year. I definitely do not try to overbreed because if you overbreed, you overwork those animals and they can get sick. It's pregnancy in animals just affects the same as it does in humans. You're tired, you grew a tiny thing in you and you don't want to overwork them because overworking them can lead to other health issues. Um, and that's part of the point I want to make, is you want to make sure you have homes for those animals. You want to make sure that they're healthy. Um, I like to place mine in pet homes. I try as hard as I can to place them in pet homes, and I try to educate the new owners as much as I can and share as much knowledge as I possibly can. Because that's what you need to do. You need to learn from each other. Um, a lot of breeders, including myself, supply, you know, any needed paperwork, birth certificate, all of that. Um as well as food and instructions. The food, you know, sometimes animals are temperamental, especially rabbits when it comes to their feed, and they can get really sick if you just put them on another food. Um, and sometimes they even get them treats, toys, and goodies. And I stress to every person that I sell or rehome an animal to, you can talk to me about anything. I don't care if you message me at 2 a.m. I will get back to you and I will try to offer any answers to questions that you may have and if I don't have the answers I will try to find them. And I also offer that if there's any animals that I rehome and you no longer want them you can always come back to me and message me and I will take in those animals because they are my responsibility. I bred them. I created them some of them so I want to make sure that I give them the best life possible and if that cannot be done in the house or if they're not a good fit they will come back to me and I will sometimes I'll even keep them and other times I will try to rehome them in a better fit um, not all breeders do this but I have really close circles of people that I have talked with and bred with for years and we always try to support each other in that way um, including a lot of breeders will rescue I personally rescue and I know that the people in my close circle do as well. We will rescue animals from auctions or we will get them from people that don't want them anymore or that are possibly being mistreated. And we dump a lot of time, effort, and money into helping those animals because we're not just in it for the breeding. We're in it because we love animals and we want to give the best that we possibly can to all of them um, in that way. So. There's some breeders that don't, and that's completely fine with them. But personally, if you message me and you say that you have a rabbit that you don't want anymore, you can't take care of, I would jump on the chance to try to get that animal and help them. And if I don't have the space for that or the necessary supplies, I can sure try to find somebody that does. Um, just to close off this video, because it's getting a little bit long, 
I just want to highlight a few things. There is a difference between ethical and unethical breeders. And you can see that often in the condition of their animals and the husbandry and their goals as a breeder. What do they want to do? Do they want to make money or do they want to better themselves and the breed? Um, not all breeders are cruel hearted people. Um, we're not here to take advantage of animals or anything like that. Um, we truly enjoy the hobby the same as you would enjoy any of your hobbies. We meet new people, we compete, and we get better, and we learn. But we're also humans, and we make mistakes sometimes. And, you know, we try to right them, and there's often a lot of times in the breeding community that others have made mistakes. And that impression is forced upon you as well. So... I'm trying to help break the stigma here and show that there are breeders out there that are caring and they're not just in it for the money. They're not just in it to, you know, have more animals. Sorry about my cat. Um, you, not every person is like that though. There are bad breeders. There are unethical breeders and there are breeders that are out there that they don't really care about the animals and that's not what we're all here for. We are here because we love animals and we have a goal that we are trying to work towards. You can adopt or you can shop, but either way you are giving an amazing home to an animal that is going to truly appreciate it because you are their, you are their lifeline. They're going to appreciate it and love you just the same if they are from a shelter or from a breeder. Um, so if you are thinking about adopting or shopping or talking to a breeder about possibly getting an animal even if you don't get one they are a great wealth of information and we will try to help you in any possible way thank you